And hello. Uh, hello, everyone. <laughs> Hi, Hi Shannon. Everybody. Hello. Hi, Sasha. Okay, wonderful. Another another Wednesday. Now Wednesday. How are you this week? Another Wednesday. <laughs> I'm great. I'm great. How are you? Uh, excited to be here again. Again. Wonderful. So uh, let's let's you rock. Let's rock yeah, immediately. I, I guess it's I enough. Like this topic tonight because I think this is super super important, and everyone's going to want to know about this because this is like a like really revealing of of how we can help dogs and how we might be hurting them and not even know it. Know it. Yeah. Very big, very big, very important. So I'm excited. I mean, I'm excited and I'm kind of sad because this is sad to think dogs might be suffering, but I'm excited to think we can figure out how to help them not suffer. Yes, wonderful, great. I think we here and there touch based on that, but this week we're gonna dive in really deep around what does it mean having a good behaved dog? That's actually the whole idea of having a good behaved dog is to provide an uh, um, environment in which dogs' communication to a humans, the way they're going to choose willingly to communicate with us, will be assigned, like we're going to be pursuing their communication as an accepted behavior, the behavior we want to get from our dogs in return for the, for the, for the kind of interaction we have with them. So, and then we're going to talk about this week, we're going to, you know, dive in, in what the pure love and harmony actually is not. The harmonic bonding is not in a training method, is not an obedience way to get the dogs listen to us. It's not in a way of conditioning your dog. It's the way to understand your dog, to communicate with the, your dog by your actions, providing them very clear messages about on which they're going to respond in what we're going to pursue as a positive behavior. Is that, yeah. isn't that excited? It is exciting. And I think it's just it's the point I wanted to highlight as the non-dog expert, but the very much loving dog, <laughs> dog mom um, and advocate is that difference between training, obedience training, and like, er, like organic behavior like, I think that's really important to just note the difference of when we want a certain behavior from our dog, there's a way to go about it that's different from obedience training that most of us are taught. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, because uh, obedience training is a conditioning. So we condition the dog to do a certain task that we assume that by doing that thing, we're going to gain a leadership position over the dog because we will be able to train to enforce our wish and we, we, we willingly uh, desire the desirable behavior on the dog. And the uh, uh, dog will respond to that, uh, you know, by, by kind of willingly, uh, kind of obe ob obediently, how you say that. The dog going to obey to yeah. whatever he's going to be conditioned to. And then we need to kind of like, we'll be happy by having a dog be having a happy, a happy, a healthy dog by our side. But the problem with that actually... We think, we, think we, are, we think we're having a happy, healthy dog. Yeah, we think we have a happy, healthy dog. And you know what? The, 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 uh, everything of this comes from the like, early uh, kind of like very uh, enforceable experiment about every one of us heard of was a Pavlov experiment. How to yeah. turn... How to turn uh, conditioned behavior into unconditioned behavior? How the behavior become a part of one? And then um, uh, we oftentimes see that you know he had that uh, experiment with the ringing the bell and the food. He actually he actually won the Nobel Prize for the physiology because he proved about how the how the outer world can force the physiology to change. And that is what we all talk about. And that is where we come to this point of understanding. Is my dog actually suffering in silence? Because I see my dog has behaved properly, 
But well, deep in himself, the dog is actually scared and freezed because he's expecting to be awarded or if he won't get an award, he's going to get punished. So which of two going to get and when? So but uh, let's kind of, um, the, and then please, you kind of, because I'm uh, very all over the place and you are here <laughs> interested, doggy mom. So you kind of like, if you happen not to understand something, just please get me back on track. Yeah, well, I just, you know, again, you have a lot of knowledge and I think it's like, starting at the the term foundation. yeah the foundation of this and why it's important because it's really it's because then becomes the question so if pavlov's pavlov's dog like that conditioning style has been taught we've all learned it in psychology mm -hmm. um you know you can do it to humans just as well as you can do it to dogs and I would think as a human, we don't really love it either right the condition uh, can like if I'm conditioned to act a certain way that's not the same feeling or freedom to of being yourself if you're conditioned a certain way but we don't really think about that when we go towards our dogs we can communicate we can talk they can't yeah there is a very important thing to here to distinguish uh, uh, understanding of the real pablo experiment because we all know the pablo experiment from its surface and it says if you're gonna give to your dog the food and then you're gonna, he gonna, you know, and you keep giving him the food as, at a certain time. So at the one moment, the dog gonna salivate before even getting the food because the dog is used to the time and the digestion process already start and we don't waste time in, you know, because the saliva is very important part to the digestive process and since the dog eats very fast and everything is like you know we, we all know how the dog actually usually eat so the digestion of the of the food actually starts in in a in a in a, in a mouth and the more saliva is present in the mouth more uh, digestion should be initiated within the mouth and then slowly you know get get, get further on into uh, into a digestive system but and then he when he introduces a ring to the bell. A, yeah, mm -hmm. the bell at the same time when he gives the food association with the bell and the food in time will be uh, uh, completely uh, unconscious and even if we remove the food and keep ringing the dog gonna salivate as the food is present yeah. but that's just the beginning of the explanation and that was the beginning of his founding but the conclusion of the experiment was very important, and we oftentimes fail to understand what was the conclusion when the psychological conditioning and unconditional, um, you know, uh, uh, using it in the education and using it in, in a conditioning uh, different levels than the, you know, uh, triggering the physiology. He said, like, even if you remove the secondary st stimuli, what was a ring, Okay, and you first you introduce it, and then you remove the food and keep ringing to a dog without the presence of the food. In yeah. time, the 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 conditioning gonna slowly uh, dis dissolve, and then the dog not gonna not gonna salivate forever if the primer conditioning is removed. That's very important to understand because. Um, if we condition our dogs to do something, and for example, we say the dog pulls on the leash and then you go to disobedient training, and they said like, you need to grab attention of the dog at the same time and to lower the lower, the lower trigger, uh, kind of to lower the trigger excitement on the other dog by keeping attention on the something else. So that something else can be a treat or a toy or a, right. or a kind of, a, you know, taking attention away from the dog. And then slowly those two things gonna going to match. So the dog going to be desensitized Desenti Desenti on the other dog. And you're going to be able to, but that's not actually accurate. It's going to be desensitized until the dog actually don't realize again based on his language of communication if the dog keeps the leadership position in the family he gonna always look for the potential danger and the dog if desensitized for a while he gonna again when when the food kind of gets away and how often we can have those dogs be uh, triggered by by us instead of the dog it's again changing the trigger doesn't mean that, that it still means that you need to have some trigger. If it's not a dog, then it's a food. If it's not a food, then it's a toy. If it's not a food, then it's me. How to we communicate with the dog in order for, he, for the dog to 
willingly stop yeah that's what i wanted to kind of wanted to and jump to is the, yeah like how then if the if this conditioning is not the best way to teach a dog a certain behavior then then what is because if you, you know what is the the is is actually learning the canine language and then to communicate with the language by the human behavior so we behave a certain way so the dogs clearly get the message what we want from them so again by human taking over the leadership position what does it mean taking over be responsible in pr what, what the dog the dog doesn't need a lot in the nature because the dogs we we need to understand that the dogs and the wolves are the same species it's the same it's the same thing dog and a wolf is the same thing because um, oftentimes the people would question that and they would say oh it's not but it is because if you what is the definition of the species is only how would you know that the sum of the 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 if you don't know is it the same species or not the only thing to prove it yourself would be to track the offspring uh Right. Offspring. So the 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 same species thinks it's a you know very vague uh, definition of the same species among the lot of things. If they can produce a fertile offspring that can give offspring from yeah. that, for example, you take a horse and a donkey and you get a mule. The mule can survive and live as an independent animal, but can't produce a little mules. So donkey and the horse are not the same species. Right. When you breed the dog with the wolf, they get the wolf dogs that can keep producing themselves. So the wolf and the dog are the same species. Okay. And then because they are same species, they communicate in the same way. And now we can see whether you can put on a, on a screen, just let me know when the picture is up, how do we communicate with our puppies? So that's a cute little... Uh, so the human puppy interaction, right? So we have these cute little puppies that are, you know, giving us a kisses, and we see them. How, oh my God, he loves me so much, and he he tries to tell me something, and the kisses all over the place. Okay, but then when we see how the dog play in a park, and when the dogs interact in between themselves, then the second picture will show us how actually. If I replace myself with the dog, I'll see that the dog in between themselves communicate completely the same way. Mm. Right? Yeah, if they we, have a way to speak to each other. Yeah, so it's kind of now, now the dog is talking to me like I am a different dog because he can't use any different way of communication. He's talking to me the language of body, the body language of the dogs, interaction like I am same species with them. And then the last photo that I wanted to show you is how the wolf, two wolves, interact among each other. It's the completely same way. The two wolves talk to each other as the dog talk to each other, and the same concept in conversation is used for dogs to communicate with the humans. All of these three pictures showed clearly that didn't change the way the dog, the wolf communicate among themselves didn't change a single word uh, in the transformation to a dog canine language, dog, dog human language. So that's very important to understand because the dog see us as a member of the family. So if we are a member of their family, they're going to communicate with us like they're in a family. And what the family need to uh, now we can have a picture soft, I guess, like we get through all of these three three waves. And while I was talking, the pictures were on the screen, how the dogs communicate to humans, but then how the dogs communicate in between each other, and then how the wolves communicate. In that chain of communication, nothing changed. And what is the only way the no, humans... Wait, wait, sorry. Time out, though. So the, the point you're trying to make is wolves when they're together, communicate a certain way. Mm -hmm. And dogs, when they're together, communicate a certain way. The same and way. The same, which is the same as the wolves, because they're yes. the same, same species. And then, and then when the dogs come into the human family, they still try to communicate that way? 
they bring the same language. They don't know the other language because it's that that's that's where we need to take a draw like equally equal equal equality too. Behavior is a communication. Right. So with yeah, every be- single yeah. So we we get to learn their language, which is their behavior and what that behavior is trying to tell us. Yes. And then what they try to tell us is just to make themselves comfortable around four areas of life. That's what are we eating? <laughs> who is providing it? Who is responsible for to provide it? Mm-hmm. Who is protecting us when dangers come and what is dangerous, what is not? And who is the leader? Those okay. four elements are only that the dogs care about. What are okay. we going to... Sorry? So who's protecting us, though, is interesting because we put we have a lot of, of um, kind of, I think, inf- inference that dogs protect us, mm-hmm. you know, like even like the term guard dog. But actually, it's good to know that when dogs are in a pack, they are looking for who the leader is of the pack. Mm-hmm. And if you're not that, then they feel inclined to become that. But otherwise... They want to know how they're going to eat, who's going to feed them, who's going to protect them. That's innately the first they're wanting to know who's going to protect them. And then what's the fourth one? Who is that? Who is the leader? So what we're going to eat, what we're going to eat, right? Uh, Who's going to provide? Okay. Who is a provider? Who is a protector? And who is actually that? So the leader is the most important one. So who is the leader? That's That's going to protect us. That's going to provide. And finally, we're going to eat. So that's okay. kind of all it's, you know, it's a basic fundamental, you know, when you go, I don't know what's the name of that uh, psychologist. Uh, Maslow's hierarchy uh, of need. Mais, there's a hierarchy yeah. of, need, of need. Survival is the most, important. if we don't survive, there is nothing we can do. Right. So it, that's obviously so important for an animal to know how they're going to eat and that, that they're going to live. <laughs> yeah, so that's, that's the most important thing. Yeah. yeah. So I, I like you can start to see or very organically and very easy that if they don't know when they're going to eat and that they don't know who's going to feed them and they don't know who's in charge, all, all kinds of stress start happening. Yes. And then oftentimes you don't know how it's going to how it's going to end. For example, uh, continuing. And that's I'm going to tell you now. And that's very important to understand in order to connect the Pavlov experiment with this one. Is your dog suffering in silence? Because the only way to cope with the fear would be to freeze. And there is another very important experiment that was inspired by the Pavlov. And everyone that studied psychology probably knows about the Little Albert experiment. Mm-hmm. Little Albert experiment, are, I, I think it's around, uh, uh, around 60, 65, something like that. Dr. Watson was conducting the Little Albert experiment. That was a little boy that he borrowed from the mom that was working in the in the hospital as a, as a as a nurse and he was born and then he was wanting to see how uh, the pavlov experiment in the in the human how how it can how it can relay and he was working on a fear so the baby was how the conducted the experiment was uh, very cruel but uh, helped us learn a lot of things about uh, how the human cope with the fear and it's we and when we put it in a perspective of how the dog can be conditioned to the same way, we can come to a conclusion what happens, what might be possible that happened to obedient dog, the dog that uh, is obedient and does everything that the, the owners wants him to do. So when the little Albert was a little baby, he was introduced, the first portion of the experiment was that the boy was introduced with all kind of animals and uh, toys and the uh, colors and everything. So the toy, the mouse, the little baby, <laughs> right? And the little monkey. And the, the, the baby was completely like, oh, what's that? He was like, uh, go- he was like around a couple of months old, maybe. He was barely sitting. But he was also very interesting in that. Then the second portion of the experiment was that the baby was introduced to the uh, same animals or same toys and things like that. But the moment the toy, the, the baby touched the, the, the monkey or the little toy, whatever was there, uh, behind, the, behind the, the curtain that was there at the place where those, the experiment was conducted, mm-hmm. someone was uh, 
starting to create uh, enormous noise by by uh, you know dig, uh, how you so um, like a drum yeah like a drums but in a very very it was very noisy so the boy was got scared when he saw the monkey when he saw this so every little rabbit and everything so everything that he had a very nice association with uh, uh, now started to develop the fear according to the same way then the he uh, of course like he removed a second stimuli like he moved the noise but the baby remained scared of every single thing that came right. across his mind yeah association there's association now yeah yeah but there is very important again the big end of the experiment was very important the mother got scared for her baby and overnight yeah. disappeared from the hospital and no one knows what happened to little Albert. And the, Watson, the critics of the Watson was telling, oh, this is a terrible experiment that is what conducted and it should never be allowed. And he said, like, but his point of doing this experiment was to see, can then he reverse backwards? So after introduce right. the fear to the baby, according to all of these animals, can he remove the fear by positively removing the fear and slowly introducing uh, like Pavlov said, if the secondary stimuli is removed, the primary right. memory costs to come back. Right. Uh, and then, unfortunately, the little Albert, uh, as we know from the historian books, died of age, uh, of age uh, in between nine and ten years old, out from hydrocephalus, like a, he, 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 his, his, um, his um, kind of like a liquor, like a liquid uh, liquidation, like a brain was in full of liquid, so actually kind of he died of, of that uh, disease. Mm. That actually, again, the critics of the Watson told that actually uh, uh, physiology that created with such enormous amount of the fear within the baby's body created yeah, collapse. That age when he's so little and his, his, like his first introduction to so many things, that would yeah. have to be an enormous Stress. impact. Yeah. Right? And then mm -hmm. uh, the Watson was telling back that actually he just, he, he claimed that he actually was never intended to hurt a baby, but to conduct the experiment. And down the road, he blamed the mom because she ran away in the middle of the experiment. So that was, but what happened? He said, like, what actually happened there is when the second stimuli, that was a fear, introduced in accordance to memories that were allow and now you have this uh, link in between <laughs> I I I I want to touch this and I get get punished what happens to a baby is because again response to a fear naturally can be only three way flee run away yeah freeze or attack yeah because I we are, the babies and the dogs can flee anywhere they are on the leash and they are on the on the in the house and they're looking their parents as a god they don't run away from there they don't confront them so they they won't fight as their babies and the little dogs they won't fight the only option to survive is to freeze, to freeze but the freezing yeah. bring a lot of tension and as the little albert experiment bring you might end up having a dog that behave properly but if freezed is going to suffer in silence and the stress that we won't see will at one day collapse the body and come out as a disorderal disease of we don't even, we can't even predict in which source. When they free, because they're, because they're in this free state too often, not just a temporary, like as survival is supposed to be like momentarily not to live yeah. that way. Because it, it then becomes a chronic stress. Right. It becomes uh, it becomes a stress, and the, then the stress is no stress just because it's in a theory. It's in a biological uh, 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 response of the of the body releasing an, an enormous amount of the stress hormones, like adrenaline that triggers the cortisol level, and then mm -hmm. the cortisol level has one uh, task to shut the immune response, to shut off the fighting mode of the of the of the body. Because right. you know when my my uh, when when you when the people are diagnosed with all sort of the autoimmune diseases, yeah, usually they're gonna be 
assign the corticosteroids or cortisols or something like that. So the hormones that are going to lower the activity of the, of, the, of, the, of the immune system so the immune system doesn't attack its own organism, right? Right. So that's how the cortisol is very crucial. But as you said, it shouldn't supposed to be released in a chronic sense. Right. Not an ongoing situation. It's yes. meant for survival yes. to, to respond to some, some stimuli that threatens your safety and then it's short term and then you're, you're out of it and you can recover back to your normal body rhythms. But that doesn't happen if the, if the system freezes on the emotional level because the babies and the dogs are trusting to the parents and the owners right. and they, they don't have a choice to flee or to, uh, to attack them. So what actually happens are they freezed. And uh, unfortunately we have a lot of uh, unknown, uh, unknown diseases to the, to the world that the modern dog, especially pets are suffering from like 60% of the dogs are will going to experience some sort of the cancer. And the cancer, like one of the main ingredients in creating a body responsible to the cancer cells uh, and uh, that, uh, you know, um, structure of creating a, 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 like an environment for the cancer would be a stress. Mm -hmm. it's, not, it's not the only one, but it's a main component. It's maybe not, you know, you have a lot of other things that need to be in place. But if you have a stress away, then the body can cope with everything, like environmental stress, the body can cope with it. With the toxicology, the body can cope with it. All of these cancer cells that are we having in our body on the daily level that, that might just be uh, you know, neutralized by the immune system, the body can cope with that. But not if the stress is high on, on stake. Right, because stress compromises our immune system. So yeah, we're not to fight things as strongly. To be to be down to the truth, it's very complex way of how that happens. But in order to you know take it down to the fifth grader to understand that there is a connection in between stress and lowering the immune system that can uh, bring the collapse of the body, and the stress can be uh, considered at, as any environmental pressure on the freedom of the individual, no matter of which kind, right? No and matter which kind of. Uh, any oppression, any, any oppression, oppression, yeah, any oppression that happens in the environment in which individual live, so e live either either baby or the dog, everyone that has that authority figure over them, mm -hmm. that that the little boy or girl or or little puppy need to obey too, and they have option to be afraid, to want to do some, to be afraid of that, and then not doing because they are afraid of doing it. Then the other option is I'll 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 do it so I'll I'll get a treat. But then if I'm not getting a treat, I won't do it for so long. The Pavlov yeah. said. And yeah. then the third option is I trust you, I respect you, and I do it willingly. Yeah, well, that's like the way to go right there. So yeah. it's learning how to cultivate that versus. For example, knowing all of this, it's very important. For example, now we live in Miami, right? And I'm little, literally shocked how many people... ...the training leash, right? The people... Yeah, train. it like chokes them a little bit. Uh, did you ever try it? No. So it everyone looked, that... Everyone awful. that... Everyone that, that that takes the dog to a to a to a park with this should try actually what does it what does it mean? So you should do it like that to yourself and then you can just choke. I, I can't even stress how, how terrible this is on my on uh. my you can't even it's terrible feeling and then do you love your dog? Yes, I love you. I love you, just walk by my side, next to do. So how do you think that the dogs respond to this? Well, it is. It's a shutdown. It's a shutdown. You it's have a to complete obey. shutdown. However, yeah. you know what these collars were, were made for, right? We call those collars. Like it looks like because it's choking them. 
Yeah, yeah, it's showing, so you can, which kind of willingness, uh, kind of like, lets me just take off this somehow. It's just awful. It looks awful and it, ugh. But you know, you when you know the purpose of this, actually, it should be wear, worn like this. This is how this color should be worn. It's called wolf color. Can you put weather and a couple of pictures up? So actually what was, this color was I... designed, sorry, this color was designed to be wear like this. So wow. anything that attack your dog, oh. can the dog can be protected from. So this is what you wear when you wear this color should be wear like this. I don't know who gonna attack your dog if everything is around you, okay? But this is not a training color. This is not a choking color. This so color. What is happened? Where? How did that get mis mis? done along the way and people use it like everything, that you know how the everything gets hijacked and then the people just oh if i would just turn this one around i don't have a wolf anymore around and i can teach my dog to go to go by my by my leg no you don't teach your dog to buy your by your leg you make your dog freeze and he yeah. obediently he obeyed to your leg because you should try wearing this color this way on your own neck first the dog gonna occasionally okay. learn that if he pulls over, it's gonna be choked. Yeah. And this, this is this color you buy in the most elite the pet shops. You can buy it, and the label this this color has is a training it looks color. Like a torture device. Yeah, it should be forbidden. And yeah. everyone that takes the dog in this color should be ashamed of the, 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 again, like that's the way how the people pursue the world of the, of the, of the, of the dog human relationship today. And those dogs help us save our lives because they come into our lives when the most emotional need of ours was so weak. So we were not able to cope with our life changes. And then we had a dog. Again, I don't think so that actually the people should be responsible for their actions. So when I say the people that walk the dog on this collar should be ashamed because they should look deeper. It's doing it something just because someone told you, it's not an excuse. Yeah, I mean, it's so easy to look at that if you're conscious at all and you look at something like that and you and you love your dog, it's, it's kind of like, wh why would you want to go through a behavior in a form that actually hurts them doing it? Because and there then, is no other options, unfortunately. And we need to make this be yes, a world options. movement. No, because, there are options. Sorry? There are options. That's what we're talking about today. No, no, I get that. Like This is why we need to make this be a world movement, because of these options. The, yes. uh, the, we don't train dogs. So if you want to train how to, this is not an obedient class. This is not an obedience class. This but is not in a group that. class. Sorry? I was correcting that because I was talking about how that is not okay. And and when you said there's no other option, I just wanted to clarify because actually we, what we're talking about is there is another option, which True. is I'm sorry. to understand order, love, and harmony that doesn't hurt your dog, but you can still get the behavior because, but it's, it's, I mean, really it's so much how we are with people. You, you love people, you, you are in, with, show up with integrity so they can trust you. And that's how people treat you well. And then you treat them and you have this beautiful reciprocal relationship. But it's like with dogs, if we're oppressing them, like, I want you to be my best friend and I want you to love me all the time, but I'm going to like shut you down and make you do it this way. And then I'll call you good dog. It's so conditional. Nobody likes to be loved conditionally. That doesn't feel like love. That's kind of, I think like humans are left with, with the, with the, I, I must say like there is options, but the, in order for you to look for the options, you need to start raising your awareness about I need an option because right. I don't want this. If this is the only way for me to walk the dog, I'll better not walk the dog. Right. Because this is not walking the dog. And I assure that every one of you that paid $50 for this device going to have much bigger bills when that organism completely shuts off. And when the veterinarian starts to come in and uh, ask you for the bills of uh, what the cortisol that this device put in the system yeah. of your dogs uh, is creating long run. And then, then we end up 
you know, putting our dogs down because the vet bills are too high. We can't cope with that uh, slowly, you know, disintegrated bodies and everything that takes forever. It's in, in the nature, it's not normal for the animal to suffer while dying. Uh, for, in an animal, uh, not, not a lot of animals would, you know, die of any illness within the, in the nature. They're going to usually be killed or killed or something like that. The right. pets are something that suffers next to a human much longer because of, of this. Yeah. Because of this. This is not an attra- once again, it's not an training collar. It's called wolf collar. And it was used uh, centuries ago for the herding dogs to be protected when attacked by the wolves. Because the, bo- the, 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 the body, the dog can be hurt everywhere, but not around the neck. And that's where the yeah. wolves would attack. Right. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. They go for the jugular. Uh, yeah, so if you don't wear this collar right, like this, or that's kind of like really misinformation. Oh my gosh. And it's kind of like... It's crazy town. Yeah, it is. And you, you will not be uh, like small dogs, big dogs, large dogs, all kinds of dogs. But, you know, the important thing is I can't approach anyone telling them what are you doing to your dog, right? If you are not called to, to say something, you, you, you can say nothing. Because, uh, and this is something that we really need to, you know, put our focus and attention. You don't give an advice when you are not asked to do you know, because in order for healing to happen, authorization the need to be, you know, asked first, right? Yeah. I can't right. help you There's... if you are not aware of you need help. So yeah. I kind of like my my heart cries when I see all of those dogs walking in the park, behave properly and perfectly and wagging their tails. And the only thing I see them asking is, can you just can you just take a leadership position? and have me relax. And once I'm relaxed, you don't need any leash, any choking, any collar. I'll walk by your leg willingly because that's where I'm the most happiest. The dog is happy on the feet of its master. So the dog wants to lay on the feet of the master and the master of the dog's life is a human. Right. So when we yeah. have... When we established ourselves as a master, as a teacher to the dog, as yeah. inspired leaders to the dog, they're going to naturally gravitate to their natural place. And the natural place of the dog is on the feet of the master. They won't run away. They won't go. And they're going to do all of that willingly. I mean, it just makes so much sense if you think about it, because that's a, it's the same way we want to follow leaders in our own lives. It's not by someone forcing us. That's dictatorship, you know, which is oppressive mm-hmm. and doesn't allow choice when it's a person that's a leader that allows us that and respects us and wants the best for us and is looking out for us. Then we can follow that leadership much more willingly because we're being thought of, we're being considered, we're being valued. Mm-hmm. the other way it's not it's not leadership it's oppression it's, it's, where you said the most important thing in order for us to be respected and valued is actually to be seen for who yeah. we are right and the the people today they just they just feel they, they don't they're not seen right so i need to do things so someone sees me they're not seen and the dog the only thing they want is to be seen but as they are they're not, they our, they're not our replacement for babies, for mothers, for fathers, for anything. They're dog. And dog is there to serve people. And that's their purpose, serving man on its journey. And if now the journey of the humans is at that level, that the dogs are not anymore the herding dogs, sheeping dogs, these dogs, that dogs, the dogs have a role of helping human transition to the next level by learning from how to establish the rightful relationship in which I need to become a leader and I need to lead my dog and I need to respect my dog as a dog. And the only way for that to happen will be to take a shoes and take responsibility. And out from that responsibility, I'm going to grant the pure love to that animal, the love the dog deserves. 
And right. when we get that so responsibility and the love will give us the respect. And once yeah. we have uh-huh. the respect from the dogs, then they're going to, again, I'm coming back to that one. Everything in the harmonic bonding, the harmonic resonance with the dog, everything is done willingly. The dogs are magnetized towards us. We go left. If they are cold, they're going to go left. Yeah. If they are not cold, they're going to just stay sleeping wherever they are because the dogs are scared for our survival because we bring food, so we still provide the food. But if we provide the food and we don't show responsibility of the leadership, they're going to protect us from everything and we don't know will that be aggression towards human or towards children or towards what. So that's how the aggression starts. The aggression is not an aggressive because that dogs choose willingly to be bad dogs. No, the dog become aggressive to protect their babies, their family, their, their human babies, because no one of the human babies is taking a leadership position. And then the dogs grant that. And how to... How to establish, it's not some imaginary leadership position, it's just be responsible pet parent, as you would be to a children. You, do, and the, you, know, you have this, this movement of the, of the really conscious parents at, at, at this time, where it's kind of, right? They said, like, I don't teach my ch- child anything. I inspire them to become the best possible version of themselves. But in, for, in order for that to happen, I need to be the best possible version of myself. Right. Yeah. And which a lot, a big part of that is being conscious, being able to be conscious and aware of other people. And like you said, seeing, hearing them, like thinking about what their experiences, what their needs are, especially when they're dependent, like dogs and children, and they can't talk, they can't run away, they can't fight back. They are completely vulnerable to depend on us, their parents. So, that that element is really really important to to yeah create that safety and that that consciousness makes such a huge difference. Mm-hmm. And the consciousness doesn't happen without knowing it, and right. the knowledge is the first step towards raising the consciousness. Even you know when you said to to bring awareness to that pureness of the consciousness, uh, where actually uh, you know so called like a Buddha would say like fullness of the emptiness or emptiness of the fullness, the way you want, or the Maharishi would talk about the silent dynamism. So everything is empty and the full at the same time, as well every, everything is silent and dynamic at the same time. We don't talk about those divine knowledges, but for the average human consciousness to get raised, the understanding is important. And in order to understand, the, the, the person needs to become a knower of the knowledge and the knowledge is only way to gain the knowledge is to learn and to look for the for the for the options and never take everything for granted never take nothing for granted the kind of like uh, always try to um, like how did i how did i came to this point i could never i i was uh, i was the best student in my class when I was in the in the in the school of the veter- for the veterinarian technician, and I then enrolled my my university, when it came to a point of the industrial farming, when it came to a point that I said like, oh I'm I, oh my god like now I need to put my two years of my veterinarian study into finding all kind of scientific proof of excuses why the pig should be locked in a cage for three years and nothing else that pig will do will be anything else than bringing piglets and stay there locked in this. And you have an entire industry that's a scientifically based uh, b- b- industry of why this, why this cage yeah. is, is, is proper way of dealing with a pig mother. I just couldn't sign up for that. No. I didn't want to, I didn't want to, and I, I suffered my, my college, I suffered my degree, I suffered my education in the mainstream developed understanding just not to get impacted with this that I didn't agree. So I couldn't just bypass and say, okay, you just, you know, learn a little bit of that and here and there, just pass the test and do this like that. I didn't want to be part of that. 
but I keep I, I kept going to the to the to the teachers I loved, to the, you know, I was just sneaking into the university and kind of like yeah. listen to that and listen to this. But also that uh, set me up to uh, open the, the open myself to raising a consciousness to ask this type of the questions that down the road created a world of pure love and harmony. Because there is nothing else out there that creates and talks about this level of respect in between the two species uh, humans and the dogs yeah well there's been a lot of there's been a lot of studies about that um, and with other animals so when they're treated improperly their cortisol raises and that that actually you know when we eat meat or things that have been exposed to all this stress like we're and somehow ingesting that as well you know so it makes a big difference and how they're treated. And, and again, it's like consciousness of like, well, of course that makes sense. Like if you treat animals horribly, they're scared, they're frightened, they don't get to move, they don't get to walk about, they don't, you know, and everything stuck. Of course that's gonna elevate hormones and on all the stress hormones and that energy is gonna go into the food that you eat when you eat that animal. And so it just, it's, it is just kind of like this universal, law of reciprocity of like how you treat something is going to be come back to how it you know like affects you too so if we're not aware that treating animals like this are going to come back to to harm like hurt us in some way also because we're hurting them like we got to wake up to that because i think there's a lot of you know i'd like to think there was like, like mostly people are well meaning and aren't aware but like really understanding these old ways of conditioning our dogs are out of date. They're not, they're not the best way to get that behavior from your dog and be proactive if we're the responsible dog parent, just like we are with kids to learn and not just take everything that we were taught that that's like golden law forever. <laughs> and then we keep treating our dogs in this old school way and we're missing out on that really the pureness, the pure love. Like we're kind of like, it's in that way, you're like you're almost like forcing your dog to behave this way and love them instead of really honoring them for the beauty of the love that they give us, that they want to give us. And all they ask for us in return is to feed them, you know, the security of knowing they're going to be fed, the security of knowing they're protected and someone's leading them, they're good. And then they're happy to give us that, that unconditional love that they give us. And we can feel good that we're doing our best to understand their language and let them have that freedom of choice in their behavior. Mm -hmm. like, I think that's so beautiful when, because they love us so much, like why wouldn't you want to find Not a better like, way? I need to advocate now also for the owners because I, I guess like responsibility, uh, us not knowing again, doesn't lower oh, no. the, the responsibility. I'm, yeah, I guess that's one thing. It doesn't lower the responsibility. There is, there can be a lot of uh, reasons why we are doing the way we are doing because we are taught and uh, you, you can find in one street, one high rise, you can find at least 10 dog experts. Everyone is an expert is how the dog should be raised. Everyone knows the best because they had a dog and their parents had a dog and I had a dog since forever and things like that. But the time change, the time change and the human, uh, human consciousness arise to a level where treating the animals the way we do is just unacceptable and a lot of karma bad karma coming of us this doesn't need to be taken for granted just look at the world we live in wherever yeah. you turn there is something that warns the human and mankind that's on the wrong way it's a wrong path either awake or <laughs> to, you know we have all of this moment kind of uh, you know the planet the survival the changes uh, how the humans impact the planet the planet is not in um, in a danger. The humans are in danger. The planet is going to survive one way or the other. It's going to be like the the mm -hmm. the if the humans and the mankind are going to disappear from the from the world, like a planet going to suffer maybe, or uh, if the planet is going to suffer even for a couple of 
thousands of years, but what's that for the planet? And it's going to keep rolling. The world yeah. will keep, keep moving. But the mankind, we are in danger. We are in danger of ourselves. We're going to, you know, we're going to become so progressive that we're going to, that we are actually turning on ourselves. So the intention yeah. is good always, but the outcome of the intention is what counts. So us training the dogs to go on the walk like this and claiming them obedient would be too much of claim. And that's, uh, that's something that we need to consider changing. And I think we can, um, you know, by doing this on a regular basis, everyone can give a little of as much as they can. That's what we can do, like me and you, and uh, Pure Love and Harmony as a concept, and uh, yeah. everyone in this team, to change the Yeah, and con- it's certainly not, it's not to shame anybody. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you are right. Not to shame. It's just to take a responsibility. It's not to shame anybody. But, but it is our responsibility to keep growing and to stay conscious and make the best choices for the people that are in, and and animals that are entrusted to us in the same like way we look at that with the planet. But I mean, and I, we talked about this in a previous episode. I mean, I can see now with what I'm learning that, that Izzy, my dog, that there were things that she was trying to communicate to me that were probably stressing her out that I didn't understand how to interpret the behavior. Like I didn't, I didn't take those cues. I didn't know. And so I didn't, you know, I wasn't able to correct them because I wasn't, I kept like in this pattern of like, I don't know why this is happening this way. I don't know what's going on. Like when we introduced a new dog to the family. So it's not to shame anybody, but it is to like, that's like everything in life, right? We get to learn and then we get to change and and do better. Once you, once you get the, the, uh, once you get an right, uh, once you get an information, and then, then it become a choice. When it's become a choice, then it's a responsibility. Then it's a different level of the responsibility. Once, if we don't know and we are doing it, but yeah. when we when it become a conscious decision out from the choices, then the impact of the on the wrongs as a you know karma comes back uh, in a different way. So yeah. that's what that's what's very important to know. Um, uh, and we yeah, need to be sorry. No, I was just going to say, I think that's the point of these, this show is really just to help spread awareness for people that definitely love their dogs and want to give their dogs everything, but just might not know yet there's different ways to go about um, how you build a relationship with your dog and, and how you get behavior from your dog, how you keep your dog healthy. There's so many new things out there too, with not just this on the behavior level, but nutrition and you know, someone just told me the other day about dry dog food, how that came about. And I guess you can tell me if this is correct or not, but that, you know, they went from like canned dog food to dry dog food because it was during the war. Mm-hmm. And that's how they ended up having dry dog food. And then now we give them that all the time, but that's not originally what, <laughs> what we gave dogs before. So circumstances changed with how we created this dog food and it's really not the best thing for them, even that they call it natural or whatever, they're not getting the nutrition they need and how all these things intersect with nutrition and behavior. Um, uh, also, you know, when the, there, there is always kind of like, um, um, we all go through these detox programs and kind of like try to do best for our bodies. The dog's body is not a different, uh, a different structure of the organism, you know, uh, you can give them the best possible food on this planet, supplement the food as much as you want, give them all kinds of sources. If there is a misbalance of the thyroid function and the thyroid function is completely linked to a stress, to a, to a, to a, what's the, to a cortisol. And if the cortisol, uh, uh, is, is high and the only, that the, there, nothing will be absorbed from that nutrients you are giving to your dog, no matter how hard we try to make them safe, uh, taking away the stress is a number one responsibility of the owners. And the stress is taken away only by claiming a leadership position and letting the dogs finally be, become a real responsible pet parent. It's not We don't even need to know and use this alpha and leader. Maybe all of that is too hard. 
But become a parent, become a doggy parent. But the doggy parent you would be for your child. Inspiring yeah, but- one, not the one that will go and punish the kid if you go and don't do this and don't do that and wherever you turn, it's no. Then what's the difference in between a Albert, little Albert experiment showed us how those kids will end up being frozen yeah. in time with all kind of drama going on when, when, the, when they become older, they will always be little children frozen in time, remain children forever. So the tough parents uh, oftentimes create children that are remaining children for the rest of their life because they got frozen in a time that doesn't exist anymore. But then everyone around them become a trigger for the, the yeah, boss well, become a trigger and these become a trigger. Sorry? Hypervigilance, yeah. There, there you go. Yeah. And now we have this, this movement where the parents want to try to find what my child is without me impacting its growth. Impacting in a way that I want you to go to do this and to do that and go to this class and that class and you yeah. must be sport and do this. And then when you grow up, then you're going to decide what you want. But what I want, I, I become what you condition me to be, me to be. the yeah. right the, you the know the right especially for people who are really rule follower oriented if people were saying this is what it is to be right this is what it is to be good this is what you know and then th- then you feel compelled to have to do those things or you're bad or you're bad there you go but now yeah. nowadays like a right parenting actually everyone tries to be the right parent if you try the most abusive parent try the best for the child like, to prepare yeah. them to prepare them for the tough world ahead you need to be tough and then you need to do this and then it's better that you suffer it in a safe environment so you don't get out there and be, be. but the, the yeah. inspired Mate talked about that he said there's no such thing as tough love yeah, it's kind of, but but on the other side, in and of itself, it's an oxymoron. Like you don't, that's not what love is. Yeah, they're, 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 that's very nice, nicely put. Of course, that's in a, um, a high-end philosopher of of our age, and we kind of like are very happy to have him, you know, alive, you know, present yeah. in our environment at this time to learn uh, a lot of things uh, from from trauma and consciousness and how that actually yeah. impacts every one of us. And, uh, well, it's just showing us there's a different way. I mean, that's what I mean. I think there's a lot of old, again, all well-intentioned and meaning well, but in the past, they have said, this is the way you parent and this is what you do. And it's so nice to have someone now bring forth these other ways, just like we're doing with dogs, he's doing with people, saying there is a different way. Like, just this tough love that you, like, force people to do this through in submission by being tough which is really not taking it's taking away free will in a lot of ways it's like you do this or else that's not love even god like if you studied religion at all or you were raised in any type of religious environment god doesn't make you do anything mm-hmm. you know even if if you you know if you believe you god or universe we we were created but the beautiful part, we were loved so much, we still get free will. We still get to choose. You can choose and you can do whatever you want. And then it, that's, that's the problem. How do you get inspired by God and which kind of religion uh, you need to be in in order to be raised, like environment? I don't think so any religion have a bad intention. They are just corrupt in the way that the people made it corrupt. But the ideology down the road the guides to the same path, no matter which religion, yeah. which sector, which culture, whichever. But how do you make individual willingly commi- do the Ten Commandments yeah. life? Willingly, from yeah, the, know, from the know, purest if, of the know. heart, I do want to live that way. Please help me, but don't lecture me. Show me, and I lead. I'll follow. And yeah. he said, but you know, the Jesus showed you how, to, and then follow the Jesus because he did it, and now we have him as a as an incarnation of the God Himself in the human body, and we yeah. have a path to do it willingly and consciously. And he- Sorry? He loved people though. He loved people as they were though. I mean, that's and they and by because of that, they were inspired to grow and become, you know, the the, the more evolved version of themselves. But he didn't say you have to or else. Yeah, true. 
just and we are, you know, being, we are just... being around him, they wanted, they offer, they wanted to follow him. They wanted to lead because I, I would say because he was so like, like other teachers as well, but he was so elevated in the way he could see and love and value people right where they were at. That's inspiring. Yeah, indeed. True. I must say yes. And then, uh, uh, and then when the people try to make a movement out from that, then everything collapse, right? Yeah. When you want to make a church and when you want to make a Christianity people. and the people are the problem. It's not the, the people are the problem. It's yeah. always the people and always, and, and, and when that ego trip, oh, this is what he meant when he said, and yeah. this is how it should be read when he said, and then, no, 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 it's this what we need to do on Saturday or if you do it on Sunday, then it's not valid. Yeah, and all so this guilt like, and shame and oppression and... And that's systems. again... That's not, not willingly. That's yeah. condition. That the that's condition true. is making people following Ten Commands and they end up in a hell. And we said, yeah. how did I do? You did right. it out from fear. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I trust me. I was raised in the Bible <laughs> Belt. I know that very well. <laughs> sure I had to like unlearn a lot of things because I was one of those people. So, I mean, this is why I probably have a heart for the dogs in this way too. Like, I wanted to follow the rules. I wanted to get it right. You know, that's how I was wired. So it would really stress me out. The, the good news is I, I did read the Bible because I was raised reading the Bible, right? So I knew the stories of Jesus and I knew how, like, his character and integrity, his heart. Thank goodness. Because then when we later went to a specific church, a different religion, they were very much about fear, scaring the daylights out of you that if you didn't do this or this or this, you were going to burn in hell. And I mean, I took it quite literally <laughs> as a kid, right? I was like, Oh my gosh. So I had all this fear to how to get everything right. And if I missed the mark at all, I was toast. Like that was it. You know, my life is over. I'm going to get no mansion in heaven. Like I'm going to burn. Like it was just awful the way that plays through when it's not about love. It's about fear. Mm. And we and don't want to do that to our dogs either because they love, that's what goes back to like, like children, right? There's this, this purity, this pure innocence of love that they want to give and be, they just are. And we squelch it by forcing things on them. And we do that with our dogs too. Even if we don't mean to, we can, if we're trying to evoke behavior, but not going about it the right way. Yeah. And that's the consequences are dramatic because you look what happened to the to the little Albert. Nothing different happened to our dogs and our children that they're conditioned on fear based uh, conditioning. Reinforcement, on the other hand, the ones that uh, enforcing the positive reinforcement that if when you do this, then I'm going to give you the food, mm -hmm. then again puts them in a fear position. Am I doing it right? right. Am I, I good? I totally yeah. relate to that. Right? Am I doing it right? Am I yeah. good enough to get the food? And then whatever, because the food was the one thing that the dogs and uh, humans united around. So the food is a very big part of the contract, if not only part of the contract is a food. And if you start using that as a leverage in text, if you do this, if you sit, if you heal, if you stay, if you go, if you do this, if you do that, I'll give you the food like Pavlov tried to do, but don't forget that he said when the other stimuli is taken away, the reaction des disintegrates slowly. Exactly. So we can diminish. It kind of like uh, vanishes. Okay. So, and then, but you put the dog in a thinking position. If, am I, am I maybe not good? Am I not worthy now because I'm not getting a treat? Am I doing something right. bad if I'm not getting a treat? What we need to right, take our dogs, do they please their master. Sorry? which which they don't want to do because they want to please their master. Yes, and then ended up we we think it's a positive reinforcement. However, actually, because the stimuli we use are positive, but the internal outcome of the dogs is always questioning. So they are kind of, they they are in fear. Will we they do it right so they get treat and food? Right, right. So it's kind of always, um, always the yeah. idea of having them, how to bring them to a level of the willingness. How my dog walks by my heel willingly. How my dogs come when I call him willingly. 
Yeah. How my dog sleeps fittingly when I'm when I'm away for entire shift and doesn't ruin my my apartment because he trusts me that I'm at a place where I'm taking care about our food tomorrow because I am. I'm not hunting today in you know to look for the deer. <laughs> I need to go to do the job, sure. and then secondarily, yeah. I get to a supermarket and someone else cut the deer for us. Yeah. But I need to pay for that. So in order for that, I need to go to the to the to the place where where I need to work. But right. while I'm on a work, there is he is nothing to fear about. Right. I, I I don't need him to protect me, and if I'm clear in those messaging, the dog does it willingly, and the yeah. willingly did thing willingly doing things is a pure love and leading to the harmonic bonding then you give a choice to the dog right. and the dog will always choose right yeah. because they are wired in the nature everything is right nothing suffers and every if, if something need to suffer is because of the cause the bigger cause and the bigger picture and the bigger picture for the dogs would be fulfillment and happiness of their masters because that's the only way the children too the children are doing everything to please their gods because right. of the parents yeah yeah because the children as the puppies both of those little creatures are helpless when young yeah. they depend on the parents and on the on the humans like the puppies on the yeah. humans well, and if something if so, if something they are in a constant fear for yeah. the life of your parents. Well, I remember I like my that's... life when I was a child. I was devastated when my mom got sick a little bit. I would immediately go somewhere in the churches and pray for her not to die, because I, you know the child can cope with that losing the parent, and that's the same fear the little dogs go through the life if the humans are not communicating properly with their life, with uh, properly their responsibilities. And it's not difficult. We just need to learn a language of the canines, canine language. It's simple. It's united around the food. Who is protecting? Who is leading? Who is the leader? Who provides? It's all about a leader. And it's everything around the food. And that's the, the easiest way to understand. But then we can shape those words into inspiring and much uh, easier to grasp uh, we don't need to use any words that we literally associate with the bullying, like alpha, like um, maybe leader as well, because you have a lot of leaders that are uninspiring and are bullying and are kind of like are not something that they should be. So we uh, I different think things though, because there's difference between like a leader and a dictator and authoritarian. Like if you if you look at the leaders, like you wouldn't say that Putin is the same type of leader as like a, a democratic leader. I mean, I mean, I don't want to go there because whatever, but like, if you think of like a coach that you really loved that he led through inspiration and motivation and because he believed in you and he knew you could do it. So he found ways to get the best out of you. That's very different than like a basket, like a coach that screams and yells and puts you down to build you up. And that whole philosophy, it's a completely different paradigm with how you lead people and get, get the best out of them. Mm -hmm. so do you get I was, the best I was also by loving them and seeing them, or do you get the best out the best behavior, like the behavior you want out of them yeah. by treating them horribly, so that then they will act the way you want to get the bad treatment to stop? Like that's just a horrible way. That's not love. I mean, it goes back to you have to have a choice if it's true love. Yeah, and then you know the the very interesting thing here is that actually with this type of the language communication and uh, uh, can you hear me yes uh, with this uh, type of learning language like um, in pure love and harmony in our classes the only ones that we work with are the humans like i teach people dog language yeah. canine language and once you understand what they mean when they do something then then it's you just create an environment in which you inspire their positive behavior yeah. And then they are happy, you are happy, and everyone is happy. And you would be shocked how small, actually, uh, by, by enforcing the canine, I'm sorry, enforcing the canine communication, we actually need to force ourselves to do less. Yeah. 
You need to pull yourself out so you don't interfere the the proper growth of the dog. That's very important to understand. And oftentimes, more action is achieved by doing less. And that yeah. is the most difficult That's for the dog owners. When I say, when he does that, just ignore it. When he comes up, just slowly put your hands there. When he does this, just do that. Don't react. Never say no. So this is the never punish the dog for doing wrong thing. Never right. punish dog when does wrong thing. Just take an attention of something you want to inspire. What? Uh, okay, that's what you do. You take it, take their attention to something that you would like them. Yeah, because uh, when they do something, they, for example, the uh, potty training, right? They're gonna miss it here and there. You don't need to tell them they are wrong. If you just slowly clean it. They won't do it again, but if you always uh, uh, kind of like uh, pat them or say something nice when they pee on a pad, that's a, that's a nice that they're gonna do keep doing it. Not because Gosh, you are. I was taught. I was taught you put their nose in it and then take them outside. Isn't that horrible? But it is, I mean, luckily Izzy was actually potty trained. Kind of, I rescued. I rescued her. No, but no, that's I get that. But about puppies is. Yeah, like you rise their nose in it to tell them that it's bad and then take them out so they learn to do it on the grass. Uh, the, okay, now you need to understand like in which context the, the elimination is used. And it's not toileting. It's a marking the territory. And the slowly, what, what's very important to be is if you have a, a pee pads in the home, you need to have them in the corners and they're far away from the, from the, from the exit. If your dog needs to do it in the home, and it's going to do it always, usually always on the same place. And what is he doing? Actually, he's marking the territory. He's, if he is doing it like all over the house and it's happening when you are in the house and now, now you need to read the message. Is it's happening as a part of the anxiety? So the dog is actually calling you home by marking the home all over the place so you can smell your home on the way home or actually have a bladder infection. It can mm -hmm. be it can be everything, but you just need to clearly see it around. But what? How you do yeah. it? First, Gosh. you. So all this is covered in this is all covered in Doggy Mom and Doggy Dad Academy, right? Yeah, and everything is kind of a conclusion. You understand why? What are they doing? So when you have them marking and peeing in the house uh, on a pee pad, and they when they miss it, what you? How how would you? How would you when when you would take a dogs out? You when you for example when the puppies you do a puppy, so you bring a puppy home and then f what we can talk about that in some other time. I, even though I talked about that already, but anyhow, like you need to give him his little space to grieve. What mm -hmm. we do usually the moment we bring home puppy, everyone is around the puppy, and the, what what puppy is doing really? Puppy is scared, puppy is frightened. Puppy cries, puppy pees, in order to have his mom and the little siblings find his way to him. Mm. Nothing of that's going to work. And the people and the humans at that time can't replace the mother and the siblings. And can't cannot replace the grief of the puppy that he's going to experience yeah. in a couple, in, in couple of days. So what we need to do there is find a way for the for how to inspire their peeing in the area that's covered, but uh, not covered, but uh, you know they are they are like in the little room, let's say. So they they have a bed at one place and the pee pad next to it or in another part of the room. They're gonna start going to the pee pad probably a couple of days after they are settled. In the first couple of days, they're going to pee everywhere. Because not because they don't know how to go to the pee pad, but because they want to um, inspire. They want their mom to find them. They want, they want their mom to find them. And if you start punish them for that, you will never get that puppy to develop a strong emotional intelligence that will right. be a guiding block and building block for the entire dog's character. Right. So we that can we can go that over clear. that. So and then when you when you start slowly taking dog out from the home, then he understands the home is a cave, and in the cave we don't do marking territory because it's safe. 
So if the dogs are doing it within the cave, it's always a message or it's an illness and need to be addressed. But why would you punish your dog if he has a bladder infection? Or why would you punish the dog and put his nose in his pee and take him out? That's a terrible way of uh, talking to a puppy. And how you then not expect that dog to freeze? Yeah, that's awful. It is, but it's a mainstream expected way of how you I train know. dogs. I know. This is why it's so <laughs> great to like talk about this so everybody can know. Because I do think most people want to be doing the right thing for their dog. They just don't have the right information. There you go. I yeah. guess like we are doing this for that. That's why we're doing this. Yes. So Okay, I think it was uh is it the time maybe to Academy. wrap up? Yeah, it's the time to wrap up, but like Doggy Mom Academy, I just want to say for anybody watching then that does want to learn more and go deeper for their dogs, the academy is really going to teach you all this and the rituals and all of that and just help you get aware of the ways that your dog is communicating to you through their behavior. Yes. So there is a way you can, we are doing a lounge, we are doing the Doggy Mom Academy uh, big lounge in uh, June uh, 7th, right? On Wednesday. That's like maybe a little less than a month. We'll have to have a little lounge to party. Go. Yeah, we will have a little lounge party, I promise. So you're welcome uh, yeah. to Miami. Shannon, uh, oh, you will, you will you be in Paris already or not yet? No, I go to Paris on the 13th. So I'll still be here. There you go. So Maybe I should fly to Miami and then go to Paris. There you go. Go, 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 yeah, fly to Paris from Miami. Uh, yeah, there will be a little lunch party here. And, um, but, uh, you know, you can, uh, if you need an uh, immediate assistance or attention, you can call us at 786-702-9093. And uh, you can DM us uh, and write us a comment or a message wherever you watch or listen this uh, um, podcast from or um, at. And then, um, you know, Doggy Mom Academy will dive in, into all of these uh, one-on-one sessions are all also, I'm taking you through all of these, maybe, you know, with a little more privacy. Uh, and then the order of harmony, if that's too much emotional for you. So you can't, you need first in order to enforce the Doggy Mom Academy and in the start talking canine language, we need to do a emotional detachment that means that we need to do a family constellation that involves pets. That's called order of harmony. So everyone is it's in place. So sometimes yeah. the pet parents would go through the Doggy Mom Academy. They said, I can't enforce this. I can't ignore him. I can't do when he does this. When mm-hmm. he look at me with those eyes, I can't resist. That's mean that invo- an emotional involvement is so strong that whatever the dog is represent need to be awakened and that we can do using the tools of the family constellation and we i you know i am successfully doing that now since 2015 and this is a mastery on that like how the emotional detachment but then that's actually emotional det- attachment to a dog is actually emotional abuse so it's right. not good for the dogs okay. neither for the humans so for for you to integrate yourself and your love on the level of the harmony that selfishness that's you know deep unconscious it's not it's not no one is criticizing that i'm not i'm very uh, you know open in understanding that the people go through difficulties in their life and finally the source of their uh, strength is coming through the dog but in order for dog to live the life of the dog and the humans to reach the source what they need really a s- support from then we need to emotionally detach the dog from the owner um, and then actually when that it's when like them the then actually click even more that what happens after yeah. the uh, uh, order of harmony happens if the dog and the owner gets completely different sense of existence that they were never ever feeling before and the dogs get the way to be a dog the human get the way to be a real pet parent and then just after that layer of the of the of the emotional attachment is removed then they are able to start communicating the canine language because it will be out from the respect for the dog and the respect for the sacrifice the dog was willingly taking over until the humans do not get awakened yeah 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 i want to leave it there i yeah i just i just think this is so important and also i think as a, as a doggy mom and for people who love their dog so much it doesn't mean that you're not going to get to have a beautiful 
loving dynamic with your dog. It's just, it's not a, like, um, like I guess in human relationships, we say like codependency or like an unhealthy attachment, you're going to learn a better way to build a relationship with your dog. So you both are flourishing, but there's still all kinds of love and loyalty and everything. It's just, it's coming from a more pure place and not. There you go. It's coming from it's, the more pure place and it's coming from the right place. And that place then give a strength to both to grow and become the best possible version of the self. And that's yeah. the real, oftentimes we are afraid that's of that, real right? real love, really, that's the real love. That, but yeah, 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 but you know, oftentimes, oh, I don't want to detach from my dog because this I is serving the like, but that's kind of, uh, okay, it's, that's, uh, that's, well, that's the That's why reason. I bring this up, that's why I yeah. bring it up, because I could almost Thank feel you. people go like, oh my God, I don't want to like, I love how much I love my dog and how much they love me, but it's not to take that away, but it's not that you're not going to have this beautiful relationship with your dog but you're going to go about it a different way. So they feel the the value, they feel valued and honored and have a free choice in how they do things, which actually makes the love much richer and stronger. Yeah, stronger. That's the most important yeah. word. Then, then you really get into the bond when you, and dogs are great to practice that, that yeah. I, I love you for who you are and I choose willingly to stay in a relationship not because of the great sex, not because of the money we have on the account, not because of the houses we share, not because of the kids. Nothing keeps me next to you. I mean, like now, interpersonal relationship. Nothing keeps mm -hmm. me next to you. Just the pure love that I feel when I, I'm by your side. And I'm by your side, even if you are rich or the poor or the president or the peasant or a king or whoever you are I love you for who you are and the moment that disappears as a conditioning as a something that holds the two together then the wholeness and the freedom of willing and love that uh, arises from that is unprecedented yes. unprecedented ah, beautiful. That so sweet? beautiful so beautiful <laughs> That's a good Wonderful. I, I think I, I think that would that should be a nice full stop on this episode. I guess we I not, think we so too. I think that's it. My heart feels full. Yes, that's what we're all going for. That kind well, of love. There you go. Until next Wednesday. Until I next you all the best, like ten and thank you so much for a wonderful uh, evening again. I really enjoyed. Now we're gonna take a walk with our little um, Henny, mm -hmm. and then until next next Wednesday, I give you a lot of um, love and hugs, and then. Thank you, everyone, for listening and watching us. Uh, see you then next Wednesday with an amazing topic to follow. I know. I feel like I need to say, like, we wish everyone a lot of pure love and harmony. There you go. We wish everyone a lot of pure love and harmony. Love and harmony. All right. Good night, All right. Sasha. Good night, everyone. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye. Thank you.